the flow of goods through the three inventory accounts. These are typically used in a manufacturing industry. Knowing the names of the accounts will go a long way toward helping you to be able to solve for problems. In this video, I'm just going to go over the basic flow and the process. Watch for other videos where I actually work through each of these inventory accounts one by one with some numbers and show you how to solve back into the numbers that may be missing. Notice for every one of the accounts we have our direct materials, maybe called raw materials. This is an inventory account, as well as the goods in process, also called work in process. This is an inventory account. And then of course the finished goods, the one we think of most of the time for a merchandising company where the goods are purchased and then sold. But when you manufacture goods, hopefully you end up with some finished goods as well. All three of them could have a beginning inventory, especially if the business has been going on for some time. Note, whatever is in the ending inventory, the previous period, previous month, previous year, then on the next day, the start of the next period, that becomes the beginning inventory. So whatever the ending balance is on December 31st, on January the 1st, it becomes the beginning inventory. That's true for all three accounts. If you'll notice, we're going to use the base formula here to think about beginning balance, what do we need to add, what do we need to subtract, and then that would get us to our ending balance. So beginning inventory for all three, there is something added to all three of the accounts. For your raw materials or your direct materials, this would be purchases, purchases of additional materials. For the goods or work in process, this is going to be direct materials that have been transitioned over the direct materials account and they are being used now here in the process. Notice the goods or work in process inventory line is where all the activity is going on basically. So materials being requisitioned over and put in place here. We have direct labor to account for in this area as well. And then something that we call factory overhead. This is an allocation of all those items that we have deemed to be overhead is being allocated to the product in this area. And what do we add to finished goods? We're going to add the cost of those goods that have been finished, that are ready to sell now. The cost of the goods manufactured. This is very different from the cost of the goods sold. Let's go back to the direct materials inventory account now. So we have beginning inventory, we're going to add purchases, add the two together and you have total direct materials that are available for use. Then when those materials are requisitioned over to the work in process, we will subtract them. Whomever is responsible for keeping inventory records, physical count, for this inventory, we'll have paperwork that says that amount of material was requisitioned, sent over to work in process. It is no longer here, so subtract it from the total. And that will get you to the ending total. To the work or goods in process account, so we have beginning inventory, and then we have those three items that are added together. The three added together, direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead, are called total manufacturing costs incurred. Those are added to the beginning inventory of the work in process to get, when you add the two together, you get total work in process to account for. Again, somebody is responsible for keeping up with the physical numbers here as well as the cost. Somebody has to account for the goods. Have some of them been completed or some of them still in works? Probably the likely answer answer is yes to both of those. What do we subtract? We will subtract those goods that have actually been completed, those finished goods that have been manufactured. They have been manufactured, shipped over to the finished goods inventory, so they're subtracted from this account. Whatever is still in the process will be left in ending inventory. Now to the finished goods inventory. Remember we had a beginning balance. Those cost of the goods that have been manufactured, shifted out of work in process, added into the finished goods inventory. Together, the beginning inventory plus the cost of the goods manufactured make up the total finished goods that are available for sale. When they have been sold, now they are subtracted, and that leaves us at our ending inventory. Notice how these items flow. So direct materials used flows into the work in process. 
Then when the goods are finished, we have our cost of the goods that have been manufactured. And they're going to flow over to the finished goods inventory account. Notice the items in green, your ending inventory, are all going to roll to the current assets section of the balance sheet. The actual beginning balances were listed there as well on the prior statement. The new ending balances are going to roll to the balance sheet. The only thing that shows up as a as an expense is the cost of the goods sold in red there. This is going to the income statement. All of the other costs are being added together and to the inventory accounts because they are assets for the company. They are becoming a product for the company. They will remain an asset until they are sold.